Well, hello there everyone. My name is Mangrove Jane, also known as Groves, and I wanted to chat to you today about a product that has not only helped me, but taught me a lot about building. Now, a couple of days ago, I had someone contact me about the prim to mesh generator because I'd left a comment on the Marketplace store about it. So I thought I would do this video explaining what it is and how to use it. I love this thing. It makes turning your objects and builds into mesh really easy and it is what I use when I don't want to have to fiddle around with other third party programs. I've made everything from coffee tables to whole houses with the help of this mesh generator. You can find it on the marketplace or at the Inworld store and I'll leave the links to those down below. You should actually go and have a check out of their Inworld store because they have a whole lot of generators for different things. So you can also generate plants and other objects, letters and other objects like that. Do try out the demo version first of this mesh generator. I have linked you to the generator I got myself. I don't feel like I can comment on any of the other ones at the marketplace as I haven't tried any of them at this time. Now, even though it's a bit pricey, it's 4,526 lindens, it's really worth every linden you pay for it. It will save you a whole lot of land impact. And in comparison to buying some items, it is really cheap to just make them and upload them. Now take this house for example. For those of you who have been following along for a little while, you might remember it as the house that I had when I was doing the Vlogmas series at the very end of last year. I can't remember exactly how much the house cost to make, but it was only a couple of hundred linden all up. It could probably have been a little bit less, but I made some mistakes and I had to re-upload bits and pieces along the way. The land impact for it was only 93 in total, and it had a footprint of 30.2 metres along the side and 38.3 metres along the front. It did take me a good couple of weeks on and off to make, and I never did finish the texturing and fine tuning that I wanted to, but it was a really fun and ambitious project, and I had a lot of good times in this house. This coffee table cost me a grand total of 11 linden, and it has a land impact of one, and it took me no more than 30 minutes in total to knock out. So there's just a couple examples of things that you can actually do and make with this mesh generator. There are a few ways of building in Second Life, Everything in the world starts with a prim, of course. You can use third-party programs such as Blender and Maya to build mesh objects, and there are a lot of fantastic tutorials already out there for these. I will leave a link to a couple of my favourites in my blog so you can check them out if you are interested, but for simplicity's sake, I am not going to cover them in this video. Also, if you are considering building things, please check out the Builders Brewery. They are an incredible incredible source of information and resources. They hold free classes at the brewery in World as well as provide sandboxes to build in. The group is really friendly and they are always happy to help no matter what level you are at in your building. So now I've done those couple of plugs, how does this thing actually work? Well, Basically, you insert a script into the object you wish to mesh. The mesh generator then generates the mesh data and opens the converted.dae file into a website for you to download. You then save that .dae file to your computer and upload it back into Second Life as a mesh object. Confused? Well, then let's make something so you can see how we do that in a bit more detail. I'm just going to build a really basic door here for you and it all starts of course with a prim. Building a door is really easy, it's a great starter project and you can get free scripts for opening and closing doors that are very easily modifiable off the marketplace or once again check out the Builders Brewery store. I'm going to make this door out of six prims, one of which will later be textured to be transparent so I can have a glass panel in the middle of the door. Just because I like that particular look but you could also texture it with a different wood grain or paint effects if you wanted to. Either way, it is just a nice bit of detailing that won't actually cost me anything in land impact. I know there are probably some builders out there gasping at my sloppy building work. There are a lot of ways I could have built this, but I am in a bit of a hurry to get this out. So this is my quick version. If I was taking my time, I would have used my snap to grid and align tools to make my edges exactly perfect. And I would recommend if you are going to build using this method that you get pretty familiar with these tools. Once you have all your pieces set up the way you want them, you need to link them all together. I like to colour the different faces before I link them, only because I find it makes it easier for me when I want to texture the back or the front the same way. So any face that you might want to make a different colour or texture, just make sure you colour it differently to all the others, and that will give you your different texture faces on the mesh model. Once you have done all that, link up your pieces and then insert the script that came in the mesh generator folder into the root prim of the object and then hit generate. 
Once you do that, you will see a message about it generating the model and then you will be given a link to a website where you can download your .dae file. Download the file and for tidy housekeeping I like to rename the file straight away to something descriptive that I will remember. Then you go back into Second Life, go to your inventory and then click on the little plus sign at the bottom. From here, choose Upload, Model and choose the file name of the object. Now there is a whole lot of things you can fiddle with and change here but for the sake of this video not being two hours long I'm just going to upload as it is because I know this door will only be 0.5 land impact in total but when you hit calculate it will tell you your upload cost and how much your land impact is. From here you simply hit upload and the model will be delivered into your inventory. Once again I like to rename the model straight away so I don't get confused with a whole lot of random mesh generator object floating around in my inventory. And then you can res it out into the world and texture and script it whatever way you want. You will be the creator of this object so also don't forget to set your permissions if you plan to sell this item. And that's the basics of how to use the primed mesh generator. If I was going to give you some tips about this object Number one is that this is not just for building new objects. If you have old builds that you really like made out of prims, apparently you can easily convert to mesh using this generator, but I believe the item needs to be full permission or modifiable. I haven't tried it out with this as I prefer to build my own things, but let me know if you do. Number two, if your blocks are at a right angle that you want to walk through, for example a doorway, do not convert it as one whole piece as you won't be able to walk through it. It will be treated like one solid rectangle, which is fine for things like windows because you don't have to walk through them, but if you're going to make a door, convert them in separate pieces and link them together afterwards. Number three, to lower the hole count, make faces that touch transparent before you convert the prims to mesh. Number four, when you are uploading, think about the level of detail you actually need. This is the level at which an object will appear to collapse in on itself as you move away from it. A coffee table, for instance, is always seen up close, so you don't really need the highest level of detail for that, especially if it is going to increase your upload costs. If you've got really complex things, it can be really helpful to decrease your level of detail just a little bit. And lastly, this may just be something I do because I'm super obsessive about these things, but keep your original pre-meshed prim shapes. There have been times when building houses that I've had to go back and tweak things and redo the mesh. And if you have the original prim shapes, it's much quicker and easier to just res that out than to have to build the thing all over again. When you are done with the build, you can just pack it all away into a box or you can delete it if you prefer, but you never know when you might want that same wall or floor again. So there it is, my guide to the mesh generator. If you have used it and you have any tips you might like to give, feel free to leave them down in the comments below. If you like this video, give it a big thumbs up. If you haven't already, hit the subscribe button and while you are there, punch the bell as well, which will give you notifications of any new videos I release and I will catch you all in the next video. Thanks for watching everyone. Have a good one. Bye.